Luke chapter 1. Moving right along. Verse number 46. We'll pick up. And Mary said. Check your Bibles. Check previous audio and videos. What we studied about Mary. My soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my, Mary speaking, Savior. You need to get the previous message on Mary has a command for Catholics. That was a great study. We're in no rush. That was one verse we did last time. And all of what we learned. We, we hit three religions last time. Let's keep going. For he, God, my Savior, that means Jesus Christ, because he's the Savior. Jehovah Witnesses now can turn off the program and, and do whatever they do because that just shot them down. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. All right. Did you know Mary was a prophetess? What does she say? And what does the Roman Catholic Church call her? They call her the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what does she say? All generations shall call me blessed. What is it about the Roman Catholics? It's passed on from generation to generation to generation to generation. It's the religion of my, my mother. It's the religion of my grandmother. It's the religion of my great-grandmother. It's the religion of my great-great-grandmother. It's the religion. Did you know Mary was a prophetess? She prophesied. And she prophesied true. Isn't that great? Now she says, shall call me blessed. According to, as we looked at this before, Genesis 30, verse 13, when Leah names her boy, she puts the word bless, mean happy. I believe it was Asher. The Bible, the, the, defin the definition dictionary in the Bible proclaims that bless means happy. Mary's not happy with the Roman Catholic Church. We saw that last time. You think she was happy when she stood at the cross of her son? You think she was happy the day that she gave birth? I mean, do you think just because she delivered Jesus Christ and she was without pain? That would have been a violation of Genesis 3. You don't know what God told Eve. I want the Roman Catholic Church says about Mary giving birth to Jesus. According to them, was it painful? Or did it just... Oh. I don't want to be cruel, but... You know why she was blessed? I know the answer. Because God used her as as His vessel, she was so she was so clean, didn't defile herself. That God called upon her, and you know it's a blessing that today born again Christians can be blessed by God by being clean vessels that God can use them. You know, can you just imagine? You go to the Lord and you seriously repent of your sins, John 1, 1 John 1, 9. And he is able and just to forgive your sins. Can you imagine if you repent and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in that moment God says, I heard that. It's been erased. That has been erased from, from the books. And Gabriel, I just happen to have something for him to do. Set it in motion. Or you can be, I got something to do. 
Gabriel, bring me that vessel. And Gabriel comes walking in. He's got a surgical mask. And he's got this vessel being hung by tongs. And God's like, what the? What is that? Lord God, the Father in heaven, this is that vessel called. It was dropped in the in the in the it was dropped in the sewer. I, I, I can't use that. Man, when was the last time that guy repented and, and, and washed himself? You think you're happy then? Mary is happy because she, she obeyed the law. She obeyed what she was supposed to do. And God was able to use her. She was humble. Unlike the Roman Catholic Mary that once worshipped. Now, let's get this difference between Mary in the Bible and Mary of the Catholic Church. Mary in the Bible, she's humble. Mary the Catholic Church says, Here, here's my open heart surgery. Worship me. And make me cakes. If you didn't know what that one is. And put my bell bush up. And my son is so mean that you come to me, I'm his mother, and I'll put him in his place. You say, that's not true. Well, what does the Mary of the Catholic Church want? She wants all that. You ever seen the statues in the Catholic Church? Mary is... Standing right there, Jesus is nailed to a cross. Mary's standing outside under the half shell. And you see Jesus being beaten. You see Jesus being carried across. You see Jesus dead. I've seen those little, little coves, whatever you call them in the wall, you know, depicting the last moments, the, the, the passion of Christ. And she says, she is his handmaid. She's a servant girl to God. Did you know what God asked Mary to do? Now you men I'm talking to won't understand this, but you women who, who have had children... What, was the nine months completely wonderful? Now, I don't know. I, uh, you got sick. There were nights you laid awake, couldn't sleep, indigestion. Some nights maybe you, you, you know, the baby okay, he hasn't done anything. There have been times you you know you're doing something busy and he's in there kicking like crazy. I, I don't like I said I don't know I'm a man. I'm just sure you just enjoyed that moment when it came time for delivery. I was in the hospital room in the birthing section and there was one night man they were just screaming terror and one of the one the women were was giving birth completely natural. <laughs> Jesus don't do that. Jesus put that down. Jesus, time to go to bed. Shoot, Jesus, well, I'm a bad guy. My son's leaving. He's old enough. Joseph, you seen Jesus? No. Martha, have you seen Jesus? No, I thought he was with you guys. Where's my Jesus? Where did he go? He was with us in Jerusalem. Where is he? He's 12 years old. Where is he? Forget names, God. But 12 years old. Where is he? Come on, we got to turn around and go back. Where is he? 
Why does everybody hate my son? Those religious leaders, they just absolutely just persecuting my son. Giving him a hard time. Imagine her standing there at the cross. That's my son. Where are the people that he made wine, water into wine? Where are they? I was there. Oh, they enjoyed the, the wine. Where are they to defend Jesus? John, it, it, it's just upsetting me. And that's my son. Where's Peter? Where's Big Mouth Peter? Thomas, you're going to doubt my son's alive? You heard what the women said. He's dead. That soldier just pierced a sword into his side. He's dead. Thirty-three years, that's my son. Hey, we're going to this place. I remember when I used to take Jesus and all his brothers and sisters. We would have picnics here. Wow. Jesus just had a picnic here. He just fed 5,000 people. I'm so full I can't even move. Well, there he goes. He's walking off, following the disciples. He's walking on the ocean. Let's we'll see. I think there's a storm coming. I hope he's okay. God in charge Mary to take care of his son. As a mother. Don't you think she, for God, don't you think maybe she put a little more effort into it than, even though she didn't have to, he was God, but the Bible says that Jesus had to be subject to his parents, Hebrew. That means Jesus had to obey what his parents told him to do. Now, come on, children. He's your brother. Don't hate him. Don't talk about him like that. Come on, James. I still, Judas, I still, this is something about your name your father picked out. I don't like that name, Judas. You know? You imagine his sister Solomon there, which is a feminine name for, for Solomon. Now, don't you be one of a thousand. God entrusted Mary to be the mother of his son. The caretaker. The womanly figure. You know, a woman has just as much growth into a young man than, than the father. It's an equal part. She's the one, you know, he, he brings the boo-boos and the scraped knees. I'm not saying that's Jesus. I'm saying that's the mother. I mean, a child can come in and his knees all bang, banged up and all that. She, oh my, then she gets the iodine, she gets all the stuff, and she gives a nice little kiss. A kid could be out in the field with his father and have his arm cut off. Come on, pick that thing up and let's get back to work now. Come on. You're going to cry, baby, something as little as that. Just pick up your arm let's get going, you know? <laughs> and she did it, bless him. They're going to call me blessed. She's a prophetess. I'm telling you. You've got to look at the Bible as a living word. There's a lot of things that's not told and it's not recorded, and you've got to read between the lines. It's just not, boom, one day, you know, Mary gives birth to Jesus, then he's 12 years old, then boom, he's 30 years old, then he's, he's on the cross. No. 
33 and a half years she was his mother. Forty nine. For he, God, that is mighty. How come she didn't say for me that's mighty? For he, that is God, that is mighty, has done to me great things, and holy is his name. Now, let's take verse forty eight, first Samuel. I think one one, but but then Psalm 138, verse 6. Then chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. But verse 49. For he, is a mighty, for he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. Let's look at Psalm 113. Psalms 113. Let's read about the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants. The servant girl. Of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and furthermore. And forevermore. From the rising of the sun, that means early in the morning, unto the going down of the same, till you go to bed. Do you praise the Lord all day? You know, you know Daniel prays three times a day, and, and David says seven times. This verse said, from sun up to sun down. And the newspaper tells you when to praise the Lord. They'll tell you when sunrise, and they'll tell you when sunset. Newspaper will tell you when to praise the Lord. Uh oh. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. Not some Christians' eyes. America is higher than God. And his glory above the heavens. He sits in the third heaven. He sits on the heaven of heavens of heaven. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? Who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? Almighty God looks at, you know, Jesus said he, he attends bird's funeral. He, he fed a, a whale, a man, and then told the whale, no, vomit that out. One whale and one man. One city of all the world, even the, even the unknown world, because they didn't know about you know the, the Native Americans, the South Americans, and, and the Central Americans. But one nation said, you know what? Let's put sackcloth on our cattle. And God looked down of all the cities and said, you know what? I like that. Son, where are those turkeys up to down there? I don't know. Come on, let's go. All right. What is that? That's a tower. What's it for? <laughs> They're trying to get to us. Yeah, that's so funny. We had to come down to them. I got a great idea. What's a great idea, Father? Let's make them have to press one for English. Okay. I think God a practical joker. He raises up the poor out of the dust. Wait a minute. That's what we're made of. He lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. That's not a place you want to be. That's filth. You mean when you're gotta be clean? When you're in it, God will come down and get you and pull you out of it and clean you up. You know, there's been few stories where a woman be out 
hanging out her clothes, and next thing you know, she falls into an old septic tank. And God will come down from heaven and pull you out, and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll clean you up. That's an amazing thing. We were of dust and then we, we put ourselves into filth. For all have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. Man that is born of a woman is but a, full, a few days and full of trouble. Man is trouble as the sparks fly upward. That you are what you eat. Eh? You know what happens what you eat. That he may set him with princes. Even with the princes of his people, Jewish, he maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Mary fulfills Psalms 113, verse 9. They shall call me blessed. Why? Because the Bible says my people be a joyful mother of children. How many, how many children Mary had? She had more than one. So you put children. Did you know Mary was in Psalms 113 verse 9? Back to Luke. There she, I, don't, I don't mean that Psalms 1, 113, 9 was talking about specifically Mary, but there she is obeying the Bible. She wasn't a crabby old mother who was upset with her life and everything. You know how you know that? How did they lose Jesus one afternoon? When they went down to, to Jerusalem, or went up to Jerusalem, the mountain, when they were supposed to. When they went to Bethlehem, not knowing that's where she was going to give birth to Jesus because of the order of the government, and they didn't join a tea party. To me, she says. To me, great things. It's her personal testimony. Every Christian ought to have a testimony and tell it. If somebody comes up to you, you're a Christian? Yeah, I am. What of it? What of it? You willing to give a testimony of what great things God has done for you? Oh, uh, 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 uh. No, anyway, she just walked in the house of Elizabeth, and she's speaking from her heart. And what she speaks is, God has done great things for me. Let's see, wait a minute. Mary said, verse 46, My soul does magnify the Lord, period, one. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, two. He has regarded the low estate of his handmaid, for he has, for he behold the, for, for behold, from hence all generations shall call me blessed, three. For he is, a, for he that is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name, Four sentences, and she's praising God all the way and giving her personal testimony of how great things he's done. You walk into some churches today, and, and you got to get by the ball game, the race cars, and, and you know how bad the person is at work, and, and uh, what you did on the fishing trip before you get to how great Jesus is. Holy. Holy is his name. Now we saw that in Psalm 113. Holy is an attribute 
of God ascribed to his name. You know, we throw holy around like it doesn't mean nothing. Holy is what we are not. We call it a holy Bible, and it is. Sitting in a drawer of a hotel room with uh, two people who are not married. You talk about a holy Bible where Satan speaks in it. I've got marked in my Bible where Satan's speaking. He speaks his own personal pronoun. Holy is without sin. Holy is his name. You mean when they say Jesus Christ in vain? You don't ever curse a, a, a another man's religious name. You don't say Buddha damn it. You know? Yeah, I, I, many Catholics I have heard use the Lord's name in vain. Holy is his name. You know how many Mexican children call Jesus? Because Mary said, holy is his name. So if I name him Jesus, then... Every ever hear of a person who, who has a nickname ascribed to his person, fats, shorty, brain, idiot. I mean, there is no one they got a nickname and it and it's their character. It's who they are. Joker. God's nickname is holy. That's his nickname. That's who he is. And he's nothing nothing more. Because there is nothing more than being holy. Because when you're holy, you are all that you are to be. Do you know what holy? We will be holy one day. What does holy mean? I'll start I'll start off with the very first thing for us to think about. Now I'll work my way to God. Holy means you'll not ever need a doctor again. Even though doctors may be in heaven. Holy will be you'll never need a pharmacist. Though pharmacists will be in heaven. You imagine walking up to a pharmacist you got in church and hey, hey how you doing brother I don't know my name you know we'll have new names then, but my name was yeah, yeah hey brother let's talk for a while sure no problem let's talk about painkiller first of all what's the what's pain what's that word I don't understand pain what's that word and killer what's that those are two words he's not gonna know that's holy you won't know pain and you won't know killer. How about never to die? How about having a time in your life where everything you do is right and you don't even have to think about it? And if you say something, it's going to be never going to be, oh, I wish I had never said that. Holy is when everything done is right. I don't think Jesus should have kicked those tables over and caused such a ruck. Is Jesus holy? Yeah. 
than he did right. Well, I don't think, ready for this one? I don't think that word should be there in the Bible like that. I think it should be there. Is it the Holy Bible by the Holy God? Well, yeah. And it's there by the Holy God, by the Holy Spirit. I don't think you should be on the street screaming at people. Well, I can show you in the Bible where they did it. I can show you characters like John the Baptist and, and Z, uh, Z, uh, uh, Isaiah and all them did it. And they were authorized by the Holy God. So it's holy. It's right. Everything about God is holy. You know how holy God is that we will not be? God one day, even before time, because I can just picture God and Jesus in heaven one day. God says, make a big ball of fire. Call it sun. I like that, Dad. You know? Yeah, I like that. Your turn, son. I'm going to make a little thing. And it's going to reflect the sun ray. I'll call it a moon. Hey, I like that one. That's a good job, son. My turn, son. I made the stars also. <laughs> wow, that's great, guy. Oh, Father, that's... You know, that little P.S., he made the stars also. i tell you what, Father. Check this out. What is it? Well, Adam hasn't named it yet, but he's going to call it a giraffe. But long neck, that's pretty good. So watch this one. They're gonna, they're gonna teach evolution. Yeah, I know that. Beautiful thing. Well, the father, what is that? That's a platypus. Let them explain that one. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, father. Before, let me write down Romans chapter one for Paul to write later on about this. Okay, I'll do it in a minute. Okay, son, what are you gonna do? What is that, son? It's a whale. All right. It's a fish. But it's a man. Not as good as the platter, the bus, but that's right up there. Yeah, but Father in Heaven, you know what? They're going to fight about this one. And they're even going to call Jonah a big fish story. But it's a whale. <laughs> but Jesus is going to call it a fish. Or a whale. And, a, and Jonah is going to call it a fish. You know, in New Jerusalem, we're not going to be able to do that. By the power of God's mouth, he created things. And the Bible says in Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and God made man from dust, and God made the fishes of the seas, and God made the birds of the air, and God made the trees and the fruit of the ground whose fruit are in itself. And one day God made it rain and made it rain for 40 days. That's a holy God. A holy God can tell his adversary, you can do that to Job, but you can't take his life. That's a holy God. And a holy God can take his adversary and cast him off into hell and all his angels that followed him and all those that, that disobeyed and rejected what God has done for them and cast them off into the lake of fire for all eternity. That is a holy God. And before that, God can write in the Bible and say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, that he that he's long-suffering, he's not willing that any perish, even if they reject him, that he still loves them and gives them an opportunity without. That is a holy God. We're not holy. And so far what we've seen in verses 46, 47, 48, and 49, and we haven't even finished yet. Mary has not given any credit to herself. She's giving all the credit to God and Jesus Christ. That is the defilement in the church that worships her.
I swear, if, if Mary would walk in a Catholic church, she would make a bundle of cords and start tipping everything over. Close there. 